Hello everyone and welcome back to the Popcorn FX channel. After the community vote, we are giving the community what it asked for. So in this tutorial, we are going to explain how to install the Popcorn FX plugin to a UE4 project. You can buy the plugin from the UE marketplace, but in this video we'll be showing it from the website. Now we're at the homepage of Popcorn FX. From there, we'll go to products and choose Unreal Engine 4 plugin. You'll notice that there are different plugins with different pricings. If you are a student or just someone who wants the plugin for non-commercial projects, you can use the personal license. If you want to commercialize your product, you're going to need a studio license. After buying the suitable license, you'll gain access to the Popcorn FX plugin via GitHub. It goes without saying that you need to have a GitHub account for that. On the GitHub website, go to releases to access all the plugin versions. Download the Popcorn FX version that corresponds to the UE version of your project. For this example, we'll be using the 1.3.2 plugin for the UE 4.13. Now that we're here, we'll scroll down and download the UE4 Popcorn FX plugin and extract the file. To install the Popcorn FX plugin to Unreal, your project needs to be a C++ project. And that's because we need to recompile the plugin ourselves. But you might already have started production in a Blueprint project. And that's why we'll show you one way to convert it to a C++ project. So right now we're opening a Blueprint project and we'll be going through the conversion process. All we have to do is create a C++ class anywhere in our project. Select None and click Next, then Create the class. We'll fast forward the door waiting to avoid the boredom in the waiting room. When Visual Studio starts, it's sweet proof that we now have a C++ Unreal project. Visual Studio opened on the other window, just gonna drag it over here and close it. Now we'll go to the root of our UE project and create the plugins folder if it doesn't already exist. Then copy the UE4 Popcorn FX plugin folder to paste it in the plugins folder. Fast forwarding again. When it finishes copying, we need to regenerate the Visual Studio project. We'll right click on our project file and generate Visual Studio project files. Then double click on our project. A dialog box will show up asking us if you want to rebuild some modules. We definitely want that, so we'll click on yes. Fast forwarding. After rebuilding the project, we can now see a new popcorn effects menu in the top. If we click on it, we can verify the installed plugin version and its compatible SDK version. For this tutorial, we will create a new popcorn effects project. So we'll go to the popcorn effects editor. Click on New and choose the right project template. In our case, it's Unreal Engine project. We will create the Popcorn FX project folder and the UE root folder to make things easier. If you want to use a project that already exists, you should verify the Popcorn FX project settings. The scene settings depend on the type of project we're working on. For example, in UE project, you should always have Axis System set to Axis Left Hand Zero, and the default friction is set to 0.7 and the default restitution set to 0.3. We will now import a sample project. In this example, we will install the Marvelous JDC 2015 template. Wait for it to finish. 
And then we'll get this dialog box telling us that this sample project was created in a different access system. So some effects will not look the same. We'll just click OK and import the effects. When it finishes, we'll hop back to Unreal Engine. And we'll import an effect. We'll choose our effect from the Popcorn Effects project folder. Go to the Popcorn Effects menu. Now we have a new button called Open Source Pack to directly open our Popcorn Effects project. This way, we'll always open the Popcorn Effects project that corresponds to the UE project. We can also edit our effect by right clicking on it and selecting Open in Popcorn Effects Editor. If we edit our effect and save it, it will automatically be re imported in UE. And now we're just going to change the color just to show you a proof of that. So it detected the changes and we can import it over here. That's very practical. Of course, we can tweak these settings in the editor preferences. In the loading and saving tab in the auto reimport section, monitor content directories should be checked. And it's better to uncheck D3, auto create assets, auto delete assets, and detect changes on startup to keep the control. Because if they are checked, every time you will create or delete an effect in the Popcorn Effects Editor, it will be automatically created or deleted in the UE project. So now we can drag and drop our effect in the level and see it running. This effect doesn't have an infinite spawner, so we need to hit start to see it. Just going to readjust the effects position over here. And hit start again. We can see that the modifications were applied. The effects is red instead of the original orange. If it doesn't run, make sure that real-time option is activated. We can also tweak the attributes that are exposed in our effect. Like the global scale to scale our effect. We can also duplicate it and change the attributes to match our needs. Well, that's going to wrap things for our video. Don't forget to like it if you found it helpful and subscribe for more videos and tutorials. Thank you for watching.